Hi, my name is Matt Racinger with Racinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. Behind me is a house that we just completed. The architect on this project was Scott Ginder with Dick Clark Architecture. And if you've seen my videos, we actually shot several videos on this house to show you some of the advanced framing uh, and really some amazing insulation above grade. But have you ever seen a foundation like this that's several feet out of the ground? And this is a slab on grade foundation and thought we're putting all this work and all this insulation above grade but what about that uninsulated concrete slab? Well, in this case, believe it or not, behind this uh, stucco here is actually boric hair foam, and this is an insulated foundation. Let's rewind time. We're going to go back about nine months before the house was framed, and I'm going to show you what this slab looked like and how we insulated it. Foam that is going to be applied on the exterior of this foundation. So this is going to be cut to fit and go on the outside. This is Bora, uh, Bora foam from Nistis Corporation. It's borate impregnated foam, two and a half inches thick. This yields an R10 on the outside of the foundation. Let me talk briefly about why we're doing this. As we build higher and higher performance houses, an uninsulated slab becomes more and more of a load on our houses. So as we look at this foundation, let me move the foam back up here for a second. See how much slab we've got exposed here? We're, we're probably, four or five, four feet or so out of the ground right here. And this is totally exposed. In the summertime, this is gonna gain some heat. The sun is gonna hit this and some of that is gonna radiate into the house. Really more importantly is winter time when this slab is actually gonna pull heat out of the house and move it through this, this concrete slab. Of course, our ground temperature is gonna be 50 some degrees, but the problem is this concrete's gonna be in contact with ambient temperature. So we're using two by six walls up here on this house. We're using advanced framing. We've got exterior foam. Um, we're gonna have a very high R value on these walls. And of course, we're gonna do a really good job of air sealing. We always wanna build tight, uh, insulate right, and um, so this, this slab really becomes more and more of an issue the better the house we build. And my turn mesh guys have got a couple sheets of foam up. Here's what it looks like. Our foam is going from here down into the uh, subgrade. We didn't cover the, uh, the two by four yet, but we are gonna have a foam piece that's gonna come up above the two by four. And then our bottom plate on this two by six wall is gonna come to the edge of this two by four. By the way, that two by four is specified by our structural engineer. He was concerned about some roll. Um, that may or may not be necessary depending on your particular situation. So talk to your structural engineer about that. But I've got uh, Matt and Eric from Termimesh here. Eric's got an ingenious method here with a, uh, with a cordless sawzall, a little Milwaukee guy. Eric, why don't you go ahead and show us how that, how that guy cuts. Okay, we are just about to install this foam. You can see we're actually gonna be gluing this to the slab, and really that glue is a temporary measure. We're gonna be putting a protection board on top of this uh, to protect it, the foam from damage, and then uh, stuccoing on top of that to match the stucco finish in the house. Um, all right, guys, hit it. So uh, the next thing on our agenda for this insulated slab is to show you how we're preventing termites from coming up into the house because there is a possibility for termite, termites to, uh, to occur between that foam and the uh, concrete. And of course, we can't visually see that. So we're gonna apply some termimesh uh, barrier on top of the slab, covering over that ledger board before we start our wall framing. And then I also need to show you what we're doing to uh, protect this foam. So we'll see you back here um, probably tomorrow or the next day for the rest of the process. Today I brought over here with me uh, our famous termite expert, Joel Railing from uh, Termimesh. Uh, Joel and his team did the, uh, the Termimesh pretreatment on the plumbing pipes that were inside the walls prior to this pour, and Joel's guys are doing the install on this foam for me. Joel, if I understand correctly, this foam that we've installed has created a termite issue for us. That is correct. Um, one of the problems when you run foam to the soil, usually termites can use the foam to come into a structure. Mm -hmm. In this instance, we use a borate treated foam, so termites aren't an issue of tunneling through the foam, but because we've applied the foam to the concrete, we now have a joint, a construction joint mm -hmm. on the back that the termites can come in and they can actually come right up into the gap, right along here and come up, be under the sill plate 
and then you'll never know they're inside your wall cavity. And so just to back up a second, what we're looking at here, I think you saw in the video the other day, was we've got our um, ledger board that we're putting down. And even if we did not have this ledger board, uh, if your engineer did not specify that, you'd still have your foam on the outside of your concrete. And so really you're talking about this path right here because our exterior wall is gonna sit right on that joint. That is correct. That's the area that's most vulnerable, so we've got to make sure we have that covered and protected. So what are we doing to uh, protect ourselves from termite intrusion in that place? Well, we're installing a termimesh profile. Um, basically, it's going to go over the top. Mm -hmm. um, it's the old termite shield theory. Okay. Um, the idea is that once the stucco and the lathing gets put on, the termites, when they come up, they'll be forced out and open and visible, which that's where we want termites, because when they're easy to see, they don't like that. They won't, they're going to go find a food source somewhere else. Got it. Now this is a little different than a tr than a kind of traditional termite shield that you might see in the past. This is uh, that termi mesh stainless steel meshing, which uh, if I've read my uh, my literature correct on your website, termite bodies are too big to fit through the mesh size here. But uh, that's not all we're doing. It looks like uh, there's something, another process going down here where we're at the top of the concrete. Is that right, Joel? That is correct. Um, what we do is we lay down the mesh profile, we'll tack it into place, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back and use a uh, product that we call Termaparge. Okay. And, and basically, it's a concrete epoxy. Okay. It in itself is termite proof. Hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint that on so it gets down into the openings in the mesh and bonds that mesh to the concrete. Got it. So termites don't have a way under it. They now come up, hit it, they have to go out of the building. And so basically that, that's uh, toothing in, so to speak, with, with the uh, termi mesh. And that's what's adhering that termi mesh, which, which would be different than if we just used a glue or a construction adhesive exactly. or an NP1 or something like that. Exactly. Yeah, got it. If we can scroll over here, you guys have gotten about half the slab done already. Uh, this is our termiparge applied on. It's now going to go through a curing process because it's basically a concrete mortar mix mm -hmm. mixed with a glue adhesive. And you see the folds here that we had to do to make it nice and neat mm -hmm. in the corner so that it holds that corner very well. Yep. Good job. Really, really nice work. You guys have done an excellent job on this. We've got two things left to do and this slab is uh, completely insulated and completed. I need to put a protection board on this. Uh, and then we have another beauty flashing that we're putting on top of this termi mesh as well really just for looks, um, but also for bulk water to really kick off on our sheathing on the outside. Correct. So thank you for all your hard work on this, Joel. You and your guys thank have done you. a real nice job. We'll be back in the next day or two to show you some uh, further details as we continue this process.